Hello, welcome back to the Dory Woodman YouTube channel. This episode we are going to be talking about the Valen Aerotherm Plus. In here we've installed the 12 kilowatt heat pump alongside a 300 litre cylinder and a 100 litre buffer. Right, so I'm going to quickly show you through some of the components in which you would typically want to put together should you be looking to put in a Valent Aerotherm Plus for an existing system. Now this had previously, this home had an oil boiler and the oil could be smelt from the moment you walk out of your, get out of your car to walk into the property, pottering around in the garden and the environmental potential damage from oil as well just didn't sit well with the homeowner. So very keen to get rid of that, get rid of the smells and go to a renewable technology instead. So after calculating and looking at this property, you know what was um, going to be required for heat loss and what would be the most appropriate for this home. And we looked at the Valent Aerotherm Plus and it ticked all of the boxes. Now for this system, We've got radiators served throughout. There is an extension at the far end that was done a few years back, which has got an underfloor heating system in, but it's quite small. So we had to consider, you know, radiators that might have been um, upgraded and any um, additional radiators that were required. So we calculated that and we've changed a couple of rounds. We put a couple of uh, extra radiators in um, just to make sure that we're gonna, you know, not compromise on the heat for the home. Now we're very fortunate, and you might look at this as an install thing. Oh my goodness, do you need all of this space in order to put in this kind of system? No, you don't. I mean, we were fortunate enough to be able to put this into a garage, um, which enabled us to kind of spread it out slightly, um, gives a lot more access for um, maintenance and care for any products and ancillaries um, over the you know over the coming years. Um, so if we've got the space, then yes, it's nice to use it. However, we could fit this stuff um, and, and come up with design concepts to enable that to be fitted into a smaller area if required. Now typically for this package what we've actually got so the customer had nest thermostats um, one controlling the main radiator system and one controlling the underfloor heating system in the extension so they haven't had the nest system in for too long so rather than you know taking it out and then you know buying more controllers to serve the same purpose the nest could do we've done it as a third what we call a third party control so it's not valence control predominantly dealing with the um, room temperatures internally but we're utilizing the nest that is already there there are ways in which we can do that um, and we would select this in our product when we're looking at the products in which we need to buy. So typically what, we'll, what we've got, we've got a 100 litre uh, buffer tank which we'll show you in just a moment. Um, this is here as um, to deal with hydraulics in the system. Um, it can be utilised to have a vessel of hot water so that the uh, response to the heating system is quicker and it can also draw some of the heat from the buffer um, to go into defrost for the heat pump itself. We've gone for 100 litres because of the, we've calculated to the size of the system. We've got a 300 litre unvented hot water cylinder. Works exactly the same as any other hot water cylinder, although it has to be, um, has to have the coil and you know the ability to be able to heat sufficiently with a heat pump. So it has to be kind of a heat pump ready one, or it has to be specialised for heat pumps themselves. Um, the reason is that they have a larger coil service surface inside of the cylinder because it will need um, to charge that um, or regenerate the heat inside of the cylinder um, and, and, and do that adequately. Um, and then all of the rest of the ancillaries that so we've got expansion vessels, one for hot water, one for the heating. It's a mains pressured system and a sealed system for the, um, for the central heating. And then we've got stuff like your pumps, um, two port valves, uh, we've got 
a three port valve which is a basically diverts from either giving you hot water or heating so you know installers out there will understand you know the concept of those uh, a couple of electrical points one being for control um, this uh, basically will give um, a, a lot of the uh, ancillaries are wired into this section and this is kind of signaling to what the heat pump is to do um, and then we've got a wiring sensor which is a VR71 um, you need to have some form of wiring sensor if you've got multiple points to which you are um, you know looking to zone for instance so for heating zones and what that will do it will just basically act as like a bit of a relay switch so but it's something to bear in mind so if you've got you know a couple of controls and you know various bits and pieces that need to be required on that you just need to think about that in the design period we've used the VR71 um, to make sure that all of the components will work in sync with the whole system then we've got the Senso Comfort, which is the main control where you set up all of your parameters for the heating system. Um, you know, the heat curve, for instance, you know, what, what temperatures you want to be able to provide for the heating system, um, you know, activating what's going on with the hot water system. And also, you know, it, it will be linked up to things so you can check the temperatures for, um, you know, some of the flow sensors, for example, the outdoor temperature sensor. Um, you can actually use the Senso Comfort as a room thermostat alternatively if you wanted to. So you can still do all the design parameters. And if we hadn't had the nest in place, we would have used the Senso Comfort for one of the heating zones internally. And then we've got the nest. As I've said, what we've done is we've put this in as a third party um, heating control. So it will talk to the heat pump and it will tell it when it's requiring for heating. Um, and it will obviously do whatever it needs to do at the time when it switches on. And then we've also got the Senso Net. Now the Senso Net is your internet connectivity. This means that you've got the app, which we use the Senso app, which enables us to link in fire online, so I can be, you know, at the office, you know, twenty odd miles away. And if there's an issue, uh, I can have a look, see what, see what the, you know, what could be causing the problem. Or, and also we can get energy consumption rates and you know how much electricity is being used you know how much um, generation of power is being produced by that so conversions so you know for if I'm putting in one kilowatt uh, kilowatt hour of electricity how many kilowatt hours am I getting out of it all of this is um, you know provided for you via the app you can also check this out on the Senso Comfort as well and um, and that would be a typical setup. This extra white box here is basically because this controller is wireless. Um, if you had a wired one, you wouldn't necessarily need this wireless controller. And then from the from this side of things to the heat pump, we uh, we just have a signal wire so that everything in here will talk to the heat pump and tell it what it needs to do. And then of course there is the heat pump itself. Now this model is a 12 kilowatt Aerotherm Plus. It's a double fan unit. So um, you know, for a double fan unit, you need to require planning permission as it's not under your permitted development, um, which isn't too much of an issue as such. Um, the client here just had to get in touch with the planning office. They just said, yeah, that's fine. We just need to see something in writing. And um, they okayed it pretty much on the day in which they, um, <coughs> they looked at it. Electrical wise, um, again, if you've seen other videos, you need to contact the DNO, which is your district network operator. You need to find out, um, you need to basically let them know what you're getting installed because, you know, it's kind of a bit of consensus. One, they want to, you know, keep an eye and tabs on you know, what people have installed on the, for the electrical grid to make sure the substations are capable of, um, of, of providing that that power and that consumption um, also to you know ensure that there is no problems in the area as such and that you know that it, are there going to be power dropouts if you're using you know too much electricity etc etc so all these things can be considered you just need to speak to your MCS installer they can point in the right direction and and offer the paperwork in which you need to apply and this should be done on every installation so for this all you needed uh, all, all we required was um, a 
an isolator switch on the, on the outside, a rotary isolator switch um, that went back into the consumer unit. So think about where your consumer unit is, you know, is it easy to get power over to where it needs to be? Um, we had the power, at, we're at the back of the house now, the consumer unit is in a room at the front of the house. So obviously we had to make sure that we could get an armor cable round to this area. We ended up going through the garage um, and providing the power for that. And then just consider things like the signal cables, etc., heat and control cables. Have you got stuff coming from inside into the area or wherever the heat pump's going to be? Um, and, that, and that's really all you need to worry about there. So over here where we've got the uh, little um, kind of garden uh, shed tiny thing that they're going to be putting plants or vegetables in um, that was where the old oil tank was sat so they had a, a bonded uh, plastic tank there that was contained all the oil obviously that was um, removed emptied removed and gone away clients very happy because there's no smells horrible smells of oil and then just here was the external um, oil boiler that was serving the property all gone, taken out, taken away, um, and much to the delight of the end user. And then looking in here, uh, as I said, you know, we've got the buffer tank here, um, and obviously our cylinder behind. All of this pipe work, as in every installation, should be um, um, insulated in accordance to, obviously, reduce heat loss and, and in accordance to regulations um, but yeah this is providing 100% 100% of the heating and hot water demand uh, one of the big concerns that you know we've, we've heard of late is you know are we going to get enough hot water for instance you know we've got a cylinder we're not going to get enough uh, hot water and baths well let me tell you on the valent aerotherm plus it will be able to provide a flow temperature to heat up the hot water at 70 75 degrees yeah, and then this will then be um, generated to 55 degree water outlet. And we've got 300 litres. Don't forget, you'll be blending that water down. And there's plenty there for the household. If you've got a family, that's plenty of hot water. I mean, we've seen instances, and people still live in homes, where they've got 120 litre hot water cylinder, copper hot water cylinder, tiny one, being fed from a uh, cold water storage tank in the loft, and a boiler charging it up and they have a family of four or five, and it gives them ample hot water. So, you know, the, the setups for hot water on these systems are that, you know, it will prioritize hot water. So if you, you can set your temperatures so that, you know, if you're at 55 degrees, and you said, well, if it drops down by 10 degrees to 45 degrees, I want it to kick back in and regenerate that hot water again. So there's absolutely no problem with that. And when it's increasing for, from a 10 degree, um, you know, from 45 to 55 degrees, for instance, depending on the size of the tank, obviously. But, you know, it shouldn't take more than, I don't know, say it could take anything between 25 to 40 minutes to charge that up, probably less. Um, so there's absolutely no reason to worry about you know, the fact of whether or not you're going to get enough hot water generation for the home. The other thing is you know, heating systems as well. This is retrofit and it has had cavity wall insulation, it's got double glazed windows, the loft insulation is you know, more than sufficient for what they require and the radiators are sufficient to provide enough heat. Now I've, we installed this you know, a few months back We've been back to the customer, I'm with the customer today, and we're just kind of, you know, just ironing out. It's, we're kind of doing a bit of a pre-winter check, really, just to, you know, ensure that everything's been set up as the heating system's starting to come on. Um, and, you know, we just had a, you know, just wanted to come and make sure that, you know, things, you know, how the customer's feeling at the moment with the heating system, how are running costs going, blah, blah, blah. Um, and they said that, honestly, we, we couldn't be happier with the amount of heat that is can be provided from this um, and we're so pleased to be away from this oil as well and um, they got ample hot water all of the time they've got control via their phone to you know look at ways in which if they go away for a weekend for instance they can put it in holiday mode etc etc so you know you can reutilize these systems and um, you can be rest assured that you will get it's not the technology that could be an issue generally speaking it's the home or the installation so if the home's just not up to scratch to be able to deal with having this renewable technology then you know then look for alternatives you know don't it doesn't have to be that you know 
if you if your house is very leaky and drafty, then it's not going to be suitable for an air source heat pump, for example. But um, there are many homes in which it is very suitable, and this is one of them. So there we have it, ladies and gentlemen, the Valent Aerotherm Plus air source heat pump. Hope you've enjoyed this video and found it informative. Um, just gives you a real good idea of what you can expect when it comes to this kind of technology and, and, the, and the kind of spaces you need and the um, components in which you would need to support the air source heat pump. Um, thanks for watching. Please hit that subscribe button, like, share, comment. If you've got anything you'd like to ask, please do. We'll try and respond to that as quickly as we can. You can follow us on Instagram at Dore.Woodman. Follow us on our Facebook page, Dore Woodman, and uh, we'll see you on the next video.